Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. God bless you. I always say it, but I do hope you're doing really well. I really mean it. This is a devotional word for June 11th, 2024, out of the Gospel of John chapter 21. In John 21, Jesus has already been resurrected, raised from the dead, given a glorified body, has appeared to his disciples a few times already, and he had instructed them to go back to Galilee, back to the northern part of Israel, and there he finds them. They are fishermen by trade, and so they're back at fishing. They're in their boats. He sees them from the shore. He says, have you guys caught anything? They said, no. And he says, well, throw your net over on the other side of the boat, as if that would really make a difference. They had a record catch, 153 fish. The apostle John said, it's the Lord. Peter, always the impulsive one, jumps into the water and swims to shore. There they find Jesus has already started a fire, has already started uh, cooking some fish for breakfast. They come and add their fish to the breakfast and they just sit there, probably blown away. Their minds are just not even comprehending at all. They know it's him, but they don't say anything. It's quite a scene. Uh, in John chapter 21 here, Jesus also restores Peter back to ministry and uh, gives him a chance to bounce back from his three-time denial. Then Jesus warns Peter about his future, that he's going to be suffering in his future, actually insinuates that he would also die by crucifixion. We pick up the story in John chapter 21, verse 18. Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. So when you were a younger man, Peter, you kind of did whatever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands. Speaking of the cross, many believe that. Speaking of the cross. And another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. Tradition and history tells us that Peter was crucified. He was martyred under Nero and that he asked to be crucified upside down. He didn't feel himself worthy to be crucified in the same manner that Jesus was, and so they granted his uh, request, and Peter died a horrible death. But he died at glorifying Christ. And when they would ask, why is he upside down? The answer would be, he doesn't feel worthy to even die like his Savior. So even in death, Peter and Christians can glorify the Lord. It goes on to say in verse 19, This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. So Peter, I've restored you. I'm warning you about the end of your life. And for now, I want you to follow me. The Greek language implies, So you, right now, you, I'm talking to you, you keep following me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following. That's John. John always used that little terminology for himself, the, the one that Jesus loved. The one who also had leaned on his breast and at supper had said, Lord, who is the one that betrays you? And Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. And then after that, there was a bit of a superstitious rumor that John was going to live until Jesus came back. That was not the case. But Jesus said that hypothetically. Hey, if I want him to live another thousand years, don't worry about it. You follow me. In 1984, I was transitioning out of a particular ministry and felt very sure about leaving it, but I had no idea what I was going to be doing. I was in music ministry. We had played a lot of times at Knott's Berry Farm, Disneyland, Magic Mountain, a lot of places, hundreds of concerts over three and a half years. But now I was leaving it and I was wondering what's going to be happening to me. And so I remember being at Knott's Berry Farm one night watching my old band play, watching other bands play, kind of taking it all in. Part of it was me enjoying kind of the vibe. I was just there by myself. I didn't go with anybody. Just kind of needed to be alone and uh, kind of work it all through. Walking from stage to stage, watching the other bands, meeting people that knew me, you know, trying to be encouraging to them and probably even back then signing a few autographs. But I was, I was thinking, you know, Lord, what do you, what do you want me to do with my life? And I would look and see musicians on that stage. And, well, what, what are you doing with them? And what, what's going on with them? And what's going on with my old band? And what about this? And what about that church? And what about this guy? And, and I had all these questions about not only what I was supposed to be doing, but what everybody else was doing. It was just a time of deep questioning in my life. And as I walked around Knott's Berry Farm, Jesus said very clear, clearly to my soul, don't worry about them. You follow me. 
It was almost like an audible voice. I'm not going to even pretend to say that immediately all those concerns dropped out of my heart and mind. But certainly that communique from the Lord himself was very, very clear. Don't worry about them. If I want them to do this, then they'll do this. If I want them to do that, then they'll do that. If other people are doing this, if I want them to do that, it's not your concern. You keep following me. That's been... 40 years now for me. And I'm so glad that, not perfectly, but I'm so glad that I followed that advice because I cannot, I would not have imagined how blessed my life would have turned out. I'm not saying that because of me. I'm saying that because of Jesus. I, I'm a blessed man. Not financially rich, but spiritually, I'm a gazillionaire. <laughs> Like the Apostle Paul said, we are unknown, but well-known. I know that I'm not Insta-famous on Instagram, but I still get calls from people after 40 years that are, are saying things like, thank you for what you did back then. In fact, I even have a radio interview coming up again uh, this next week uh, from 40 years ago. Something I did 40 years ago has still left an, imp left an impact on, uh, on a certain person, on a number of people. And there's a lot of us that could say those things as we have gotten older in our faith. But my whole point is, is this. Jesus just really spoke to me and said, don't worry about anybody else, what, what I'm doing with them. You follow me. And I'm so glad that I, I have. And once again, I haven't done it perfectly. And uh, I'm, I'm still a man that stumbles and still a man that sometimes discovers the will of God by doing all the, the wrong things first. But through process of elimination, sometimes you land on that right thing. I recently wrote a song uh, called "The Way to Carry On." Actually, a few years ago, and the 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 verse starts: "It's a good life we've been given. It's a good life we agree." And as a Christian now, I can say, you know, 40, 40, 40 or forty-five years into it. I don't regret following Jesus. I'm glad that I followed him. And I know in this world of in Christendom, people are deconstructing their faith and this and that and every other thing. But the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Church isn't always good. Christians aren't always good. But Jesus is always good. So my encouragement to you, if you're a Christian, keep following Jesus. Know the sweetness of who he is. Know the power of who he is. Know the love and the patience and the mercy and the wisdom of God. So, hope you're encouraged. Keep following Jesus. Thanks for watching.